All right, shall we hear some more about uh, Mr. Santos, my favorite, if, if that is indeed his name, my favorite member of Congress? Oh, by the way, I don't think it's his name. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah, I, actually I covered missed the this story, report, which I'm shocked because so, I've been I've I've been carefully following the George Santos saga. So tell, update me on that piece. So Patriot Takes, which is like a Democratic Oppo research, uh, yeah. group, and you know that they're not actually affiliated with the Democratic Party because they're decent at what they do. So mm. they have no connection whatsoever to the actual Democratic Party establishment. Okay. But um, they've been digging through all the whatever archives of George Santos stuff is out there. And uh, he gave a speech at some uh, Republican group event. And he the guy who was introducing him said, George Santos, I knew you as like Anthony DeValder. I didn't know you as George Santos. Well, I guess George Santos. And he calls him up. Hmm. So at the very least, uh, we... It could be that George Santos is his real name and Devalder was the alias, or it could be the other, or it could be he's used seven, eight, nine names throughout his life. We don't know. I did see something about this a while back where it was like he used to go by Devalder, which was like his mother's maiden name or something like that. Yeah, but and George is like the middle name or the first. Yeah. How do we so, know that's not made up either? You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. this is a guy who committed but, check fraud in Brazil. Like he lies right. about everything. Well, and whether or not that's the genesis of the George Santos name and it really has some bearing in like his actual legal name, the fact of a person who like is just totally yeah, changed oh, their yeah. name around. This is my name. Yeah. That's for insane. this particular role, I've decided I'm going to be George Santos is indicative of some larger problems for him. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, we have the best lie or biggest lie yet well, because it's actually tangibly related to politics yes. and the law. So the biggest question for me with him has always been, where did this money come from? Because he put $700,000 supposedly of his own money into his congressional campaign. Um, and this is a man that very shortly prior to the congressional campaign was like getting, you know, kicked out of his apartments for non-payment and reporting relatively low earnings. And he was never able, when people have asked him about his business, to explain really what it does, to point to any real clients. So that's like, oh, suddenly you're a wealthy man and you're able to just plop 700K into your own campaign always seemed to me like the biggest question mark. And it, it appears the authorities are investigating these question marks as well. So we have some new clues as to where this money might have come from. This is from a, a guy named Tristan Snell, who is uh, at MainStreet.law, so, and he's commentator MSNBC, CNN. Uh, and he also is, uh, he's basing this off of a Washington Post report and sort of putting some pieces together here. So he says... Looks like George Santos's $700,000 donation to his own campaign may have been laundered money from a Ponzi scheme called Harbor City Capital, defrauded investors selling them fake stocks totaling over $17 million. New reporting from the Washington Post reveals that Santos received payment from Harbor City as late as April 2021. On April 20th, 2021, the SEC filed a complaint against Harbor City accusing it of fraud. On May 11th, 2021, so just one month later, Santos formed the Devalder organization. That's where he says he was getting the money from. When Santos then ran for Congress in 2022, he claimed the Devalder organization was his family's firm with over $80 million in assets under management. There is no proof of any kind that the Devalder org ever did any legitimate business. Santos claimed Devalder org paid him a $750,000 annual salary in 2021 and 2022. He then contributed $700,000 to his own campaign. He never mentioned Harbor City in any of his mandatory federal disclosure forms. The investigations into Santos will reveal the truth, but it very much appears that Santos took ill-gotten gains from the defrauded investors of Harbor City, parked them into Valder, and then used them for his campaign. He is not in a good position, let's just say. So basically, the allegation is he was somehow tied in with this um, just outright fraud that was being committed, this sort of Ponzi scheme where they're selling, selling fake stocks. That bonds, he, fake bonds. This guy uh, says stocks. I thought he corrected himself and said, no, 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 it's not stocks. It's whatever. It doesn't anyway, matter. Anyway. Selling fake something. It's fake something. Um, here it says stocks. No, and then he goes on in the, within the next two tweets. He says, oh, I'm sorry, at the bottom. He uh, kind of corrects and said, bonds, correct, and they were fake bonds. Rather than stocks. There yeah. you go. Anyway, okay. And promissory, and promissory notes. Fake bonds and, and or promissory, promissory notes. Promissory notes yeah. rather than stocks, but they were fake. They promised security and high returns, invested in profit-making lead generation businesses, but in actuality, the money was pocketed or sent to other investors Ponzi style. So anyway. Involved in this fraud scheme, takes the money from it, puts it into this new business organization, Devalder, and then uh, sort of launders the money through Devalder and pays himself out and then uses that money in his own campaign. That's what this guy is putting together may have happened and may be an explanation for where this cash ultimately came from. Yeah, I think he's going to jail. I think he'll be in jail eventually. I think so, There's too. too much stuff. I mean, 
The Brazilian authorities opened up a new investigation into him. They couldn't find him previously, which is why they weren't pursuing him before. But I read one article said he committed $700 worth of uh, tax fraud. Another article said up to $1,200 worth of tax fraud with Brazil. Um, there's multiple issues with this. There's the issue of the fraud up front, like the Ponzi scheme up front. That's a crime in and of itself. Then there's the secondary issue of just putting all that money into your campaign, which is illegal the way that he did it, mm -hmm. which would be a totally separate charge. And the other fact of the matter is just like with uh, like all his pathological lies to this point, there's definitely more not uncovered yet crimes that he's yes. committed. This guy is, it's a, it's a life of crime and it's a life of lies. Yeah. And so you can't, you can only get away for so long. And uh, all these New York Republicans are now calling for him to step down because mm -hmm. New York is generally more of a blue state, but the Republicans did well in the last election. But this guy is just flat out super embarrassing to all the New York Republicans. So, yes. and they're able to stand up and say like, I'm not associated with this guy. This guy should step down. Um, that is pretty, putting some degree of pressure on the Republicans in DC. But as you know, McCarthy made a deal with the devil here. And, you know, he's, hey, he you vote for me, I'm, I'm going to look the other way. All the stuff that happened, water under the bridge, dog, you're good. And so yeah, there are a lot of people setting themselves up to look very silly, too. Like Matt Gates did this sort of almost like fawning interview with uh, Santos. He was filling in. Gates was filling in for Steve Bannon on the War Room podcast, apparently. Even Bannon was like, oh, yeah, you you, you <laughs> he was, yeah, one. he was busy that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great guest for you, Matt. Yeah, Enjoy exactly. this one. Yeah. So anyway, I listened to a portion of it and it was like, I mean, he was doing everything he could to let this guy off the hook and give him excuses and not press him on. Let anything. me guess. Let me guess. Bro, whatever you think of me, bro, the Democrats are still bad. How, how did you know? How did you know? <laughs> like, no, he oh, asked him, good point, dog. <laughs> he asked him like, he does ask him the question of like, okay, well, where did the money come from? And Santos is tell you where it didn't like, come from. I saw that one. Yeah, didn't come from what, Ukraine. Didn't or come from uh, Burisma or any of these other things. These Democrats are involved in, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and Democrats like, suck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally, yeah. Gates is like totally. Hey, good point, bro. <laughs> so that's gonna work out well for everybody involved. Um, but yeah, I think on the the money piece. The funny thing about campaign finance law is like there are so many loopholes you can drive a Mack truck through that things that are perfectly legal and absolutely should not be and that people get away with all the time because they know the specific way to work those loopholes. But if you do it in the wrong way, they will throw the book at you. That's exactly right. There are and a million landmines that you can step on. And he appears to have stepped on several of them, one of them being probably straw donors. Like this, right. I mean, you can't, you can't take money from other people and pretend it's, you know, it's your own money and put it into your campaign account. That's one thing that may have happened. It may have been outright fraud. There's all kinds of areas where he probably big time fucked up here. And you can get serious prison time if you uh, break the law, these laws. And this gives the campaign finance system like the veneer of respectability, too. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like how when, you know, when the when they went after Bernie Madoff or now they're going after um, SBF of mm -hmm. FTX, it's like, see, like the system's working. We're going after the bad apples. You know what I'm saying? And right. it's a similar deal here where it's like, and that's why like the wealthy and connected, usually they exploit these loopholes in a way that is legal, even though it's unethical and immoral, but you need the army of like experts and, and attorneys to, to, to tell you how to navigate all this stuff. And if you have some upstart who comes out of nowhere who does it, they don't follow the right procedures and yes. then they could put their head on a platter and be like, see, it's a good system and we just took out the bad apples. So I don't even complain about the system. That's very well said. Yeah. Very good point. All right, let's go ahead and get to my interview with Philion. We're going to talk about the Manosphere and also about his channel and what he's up to. Let's get to it. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.